Dobra Dan. Dobra Dan. Welcome back to our weekly update. Here we are once again in snowy Bulgaria. <laughs> and it is really snowy. Our, our snow cleared just about, didn't it? Yeah. By the end of last week. Mm -hmm. And then we had a couple of days of rain and on Tuesday our snow came back with a vengeance. Yes, it's uh, very cold, very white. <laughs> We probably had about eight inches, I think. About that, yeah. Yeah, so that really affected how, how we spent our week again. It's amazing how the weather affects our... Oh, our absolutely, year. yeah. You can make all the plans in the world at the beginning of the week <laughs> and the weather comes along and just completely changes it. Absolutely. And the other thing is the cold temperatures. We're only heating the top half of the house, um, which means the bottom of the half of the house we tend not to use too much when it's very cold. So... Um, stuff i would be normally pottering about in the, what we're calling the shed or max's bedroom when it when it's done um just doesn't get done it's it's too cold to work down there so we, yes uh, with a bit of hindsight maybe we would have bought another petchka for that area maybe we weren't sure what heating to put in max's room with yet and we still haven't got totally decided on that no so and with another week of being forced Stayed in the house really. Mm -hmm. We did some more cooking. Yes. We made Welsh cakes and Lovely. stews and Lovely. pies. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but no photos this week. No, we we treated we you guys last week. Shh. Don't tell. Don't tell. <laughs> One thing I have done with the snow being on the ground is I've gone for a few walks around the town just to see what the snow looks like or how the village is coping. Um, some of the roads have been ploughed. <laughs> yes, that was quite amazing. On Wednesday night was it mm. or Tuesday night? Uh, it was Tuesday the snow started badly. Yeah. Wednesday uh, evening they ploughed the road. And Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock we had a snow plough come up our, our street. Uh, come up our street, stopped just past our house, turned around and went back again. <laughs> yes, leaving a huge mound of snow. So mm. how the shepherd's going to get up the hill or the farmer that's got the little not, barn on the hill? Not going to happen. I don't know how he's going to go because there's just a big mound of snow in his way now. <laughs> but I did take a stroll up the hill and in places it's, it's above your knees. So I don't think they're going up there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in a normal car. No. So we thought we'd do a bit of a recap hmm. on we've... our journey so far. Yes, we've been here just over four months now. Um, doesn't time fly when we're not there, <laughs> <laughs> kids. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we thought we'd uh, do a quick recap on, yeah, as Lynn says, how we got to where we are now. So it really started last July. When we finally managed to get out here after the um, restrictions for the initial first lockdown in the UK were lifted. Yeah. And we found our place within a week, didn't we? we we'd done quite a bit of research on properties and we'd found some places to, to look at that, that we quite like the look of. Um, and yeah, yeah I think after four days we had two properties that were definite. Hmm. The yes. in the running we were going to pick one of them and we came back to visit this one again and decided on this one and lynn decided we'd have this one <laughs> <laughs> so once we had our property and we knew we were coming out here what was our next step was really to decide what we were bringing if we were bringing anything mm -hmm. um did we have couriers did we did do we? it ourselves yeah there was a lot of decisions to make and part of the decisions were made for us by the amount of time we had to get things sorted it was um, we did only have four weeks five weeks mm. um, before we needed to be ready to go uh, we decided we, we would try looking for a van to mm. get us over here which would also give us a chance to move things once we got here as well yeah and we were lucky to find one in our budget range and that and that it did make the journey <laughs> it did yeah. it was quite a nervous journey because <laughs> it was a very it's, nervous it's an old journey. Band. And uh, there were certain jobs that needed doing out before we, before we could actually set out. <laughs> had no handbrake. No uh, prop shaft. <laughs> no prop <laughs> Well, it, it had one. It Only half an work. exhaust. <laughs> but um, we repaired it, got it on the road, got it legal within our budget. Um, loaded it up and it brought an awful lot of stuff out for us. It did. And in terms of what we brought that we thought we needed and what we brought that we didn't need... I don't Difficult think we brought say. anything we didn't need, which is good. Um, we no, did, and it, it was full. <laughs> it, very full. Um, had we had more space, <laughs> um, we may have brought a bath. A mattress. A mattress, a sofa. Yeah. Um, but we didn't. 
And we have now got those things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were things that we we thought we were going we thought we were going to need. Um, yeah, we, people had said to bring your own bed and your own sofa. <laughs> we were a bit spoiled with a. Uh, with eBay in the UK, um, eBay you can pick up pretty much anything anytime you need it. Um, there isn't quite such a second hand market that we've found so far here. Um, I suspect it's better around places like Sofia, Plovdiv, hmm. larger settlements um, than it is in smaller areas. Yeah. But, but basically, Bulgarians don't really re no. throw things away, they keep them till, until they reach their end of life. And then they repair them and use them again. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is good. Well, yeah, absolutely. A good thing. Um, but it did give us a problem trying to source what we needed to source yeah. initially. But, but again, not a huge problem. We had now sourced it mm. and it didn't take too long. So that all went really well, mm. considering the short time scale we had to do things in. Yeah. And the people we bought off were lovely. and They still are. And they still are. <laughs> um, and uh, without their help, I think things would have been quite a, a Absolutely. lot yeah. harder. Mm. They were very informative about the local area and about everything we, we needed to know once we got here and even took yeah. us on a tour of the local town absolutely yeah um to show us where they bought things and where they did things which was brilliant definitely um although we did do a lot of research before we came out here there was there were certain things that were only specific <laughs> to certain regions and certain areas and I don't think we realised how much it differed between the different regions and the different areas no, we, in terms of bureaucracy and just the way things what was things are done in different areas. Yeah. Um, they're supposed to all have the same criteria, right? but, <laughs> but they, they don't. don't follow them. <laughs> so. I mean, the bank account being the big one for that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When we went to apply for our residency, we didn't realise we needed to have a Bulgarian bank account. And in some areas in, in um, Bulgaria, you don't. No. You just need to show you have funds in a bank account somewhere. Hmm. Um, but here, they, they, you needed to be in a Bulgarian bank account. So since we got here, plans versus reality. Well, we planned, well, first of all, what was our plan? Um, we can't tell you the reality until we tell you the plan. Um, we planned, first of all, to get here, get settled in, um, get our residency, get on the internet, get ourselves ready for winter, um, roll ourselves over into next year when the, the, the main part of the work starts. The weather will be better, we'd have more money. Um, <clears throat> that was the plan. The reality? It came pretty close. It did. Yeah. It still is. <laughs> the only big thing is not having Max here. Yes. Um, and that's mainly down to Covid and Brexit and... Well, totally down to Covid. Oh, totally down to Covid, yeah. yeah. That's not Brexit. No. Uh, we can, we have found out since we've been here that because Max is not 21 till September, he has, we have rights till September to bring him over here under family reunification, mm. under the withdrawal agreement. So it's just a case so of... his but, rights will remain the same even though he didn't get here before the end of Brexit. No, so we're now just reliant on travel and uh, travel restrictions through Covid. And getting him out here by September, yeah. which we will do. Well, fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> but yes, in terms of getting the house winterproof, we did that. Mm -hmm. But no, the, the roof has stayed, stayed intact and waterproof. Um, heating wise, as I said earlier, we're only heating the top half of the house, but the Petrick is doing that brilliantly. Yes, we um, did bring several ancillary heating mm. methods with us. Yeah. And we've not really used them at all, have we? Apart no. from maybe when we have a bath, we put the heater down there. Down at the bathroom end, yes. Um, just a little halogen one. Um, I don't like getting cold. No. <laughs> but that's the only time we've used it. We've no, never needed to use it in the top part of the house at no. all. And I can't see now that we're going to. No, absolutely. I think um, near the end of January, beginning of February, we're going to have a few more cold days and a few more cold nights. But uh, um, once we get through February, certainly, I, I can't see February being a lot worse than January. Uh, <laughs> prove me wrong, Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, we, we, we think we survived the winter. So yes, once we get past the, the snowy periods and the, the things start warming up, we can actually get, get on and actually doing the house renovation, which is this year's plan. Actually, sorry, a few videos ago. <laughs>
So budgeting, that's also gone pretty much to plan. In fact, it's probably gone slightly better to plan because we've had the rewire done, which we mm. weren't intending to do till next April. Um, but when we looked at the wiring here, we just felt we needed to do something a bit earlier. It was the original wiring when the house was built. And uh, obviously power, power requirements are a lot more now. So it, yeah. seemed, it seemed wise to, to get, the, get the wiring done as soon as we could. So that, that's gone ahead of plan. Um, in terms of our living expenses and budgets, electricity is also slightly cheap, worked, worked out cheaper than we thought it was going to, but yep. again, we've not fully renovated, so yep. maybe that'll go up. Um, I don't think it's going to go up hugely. I hope not. <laughs> I like it being cheap. <laughs> <laughs> internet? Internet. We Currently, our internet is through 4G. Um, the house isn't connected to the, the main telephone system. Um, we're not sure yet where where and how we get that sorted. Um, or if we're going to. Well, I think we should, but uh, mm. like I say, we don't know where or how we get that sorted. So at the moment we're relying on the 4G, but it's no worse than we had in England. <laughs> Which brings us on to things we'd underestimated and mm. language was definitely one of them. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, had we had more time, uh, in the UK before we came and that that is very much down to Brexit hmm. uh, and needing to get out here when we did and not having a withdrawal agreement in place until the March of that year last year yeah we literally only had three months and it wasn't in a with all the sorting out of paperwork and everything hmm. else we needed to do to get here and getting our budgets and our finances and our house in the UK in order it took that took up all that time, so we didn't really have any chance to learn much of the language before we got no. here. I mean, we are one thing about being kept in the house because of the weather. We are starting to concentrate a little bit more on that. Still not as much as we should. No, we've we've got to be a bit more disciplined about that. But uh... we have, and also <laughs> I think that's where COVID comes into it. Mm. Is in terms of with the lockdowns and with the shut down of areas in Bulgaria, yes. there's less chance to interact with Bulgarians. There certainly seems to be. I mean, we we interact a bit with the girl in the shop, um, but it's, if you're going and you're buying milk and eggs, it's, there's only so much you can talk about. Um, and we can just <laughs> and about... post office woman. <laughs> post office woman who says, posta. But um, yes, uh, it would be nice to be actually actually have a conversation with them. Yeah. Um, and meet some English speaking Bulgarians who could then help us. But like we say, until we can socialize, um, the chances are, are less frequent. Young people are very good here. Mm. I find most shops we've gone into, they speak English. They, they well. generally have somebody who, if we speak to somebody who doesn't, they go and get the, the English speaking assistant. So. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he's quite <laughs> To help you, to, to strain But our village English is definitely not a huge place where there's people no. speaking English. No. Uh, they do speak. But we are <laughs> learning slowly. Very slowly. <laughs> But we will get there. It'll be one of those things that suddenly clicks into place and then, hopefully, <laughs> uh, we should get better. So would we have changed anything? Um, looking back over the last four months, I can't think of anything major we would have changed. I mean, there might be little minor bits and pieces, but nothing comes to mind. No. And I think our most, if we were to give advice to anybody else doing it... <laughs> what would that be? Learn the language. Learn the language. <laughs> Research as much as you can. Of the your area. Especially in the area you're planning on settling in. Right. Um, and get a good contact hmm. who speaks Bulgarian and English to help you through the bureaucracy side. We, especially we, if they've done it themselves. Yeah, we, d we did. Um, we had a girl who was, she was actually the estate agent who hmm. sold us the house. Yeah. And she was excellent in getting her, letting us know what we needed for our residency hmm. and getting our utilities put on and all of that she did all of that for us and that was yeah. a real help it would have, that would have been much more of a struggle without it absolutely yeah oh the other thing we didn't mention was the internet just about how Google and the search engines we're used to in the UK have very little still on to find anything in Bulgaria you have to sort of get to page 27 <laughs> Um, of Google because it still comes up with all the American and English and yeah much bigger brands I think that, brands. if we were searching in Bulgarian uh, it might be a different story but we're not at that stage yet so yeah um, that would again ties back to language yeah. 
we'll let you know once we can so if you're Bulgarian. We, one of the reasons we didn't have to go to Targovishti this week was because we found one of the supermarkets in Targovishti does deliver yep. to our village here in Makaria Polsko. So that was... Online shopping. Online we shopping. Found it. And <laughs> incredibly efficient once mm. it worked out. And I think they charged us about five pounds for delivery. Five pounds for delivery. Um, delivered the next day. Although was... apparently they would have delivered the same day. Um, had we asked them. lovely young lads who were brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, so we found that we could get our weekly shopping, our monthly shopping, whatever, delivered to us. Perfect. But it did take four months for us to discover. <laughs> yes. So again, had we spoken or written and been able to read and write Bulgarian, it may have been a lot quicker. Um, so we do use our village shop a lot now. We do. We, certainly for everyday items, bread and milk and mm. eggs. <laughs> yeah. um, veg. So yeah. you can get mo you could we could have survived with just the village shop if yeah but it was the things we probably more used to as British people. If anybody out there has any additional bits of advice for us, um, yeah, more than welcome. Absolutely, <laughs> um, we're still finding our way. Um, all help is gratefully received. <laughs> and if there's anything else you want to know, please put it in the comments. Mention if yeah. there's any information you'd like that we haven't mentioned. Anything you want to see around here. Um, Anything you want to see us doing, whether yeah. it's making coffee on the Petska or me chopping more wood or... No, we won't. I think they've had enough. I th yeah, I think they probably had enough of that. Um, but uh, yeah, if there's anything you want, just let us know. We don't regret for one second coming out here, do we? Absolutely not, no. Our first four months has been as we expected it would be, yeah. with our rose-tinted glasses on. Mm. If you're thinking of doing something like this and you've put a lot of thought into it and you still want to do it, go for it. Absolutely, go for it. So that's it from us this week. Mm. We hope you enjoyed this little update. So we're a bit lost for what to put in because it's just been day to day normal life here. Yeah, and there's only so many times you want to watch me cut wood or fix a gutter or just do an alcohol run. We've showed you that stuff. Um, yeah. But like we say, anything you want to see, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> so for both of us this week, Dos Goro. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Take Bye. care. Bye. <laughs>